There are only a few things that really matter, and there are many things that are trivial. There are very, very many trivial things and very few vital things. The vital few versus the trivial many. Uh, Mark Whitmore, head coach, Lodestone True North, and I'm hanging out here in my shop at the house, and I want to point out something. Right over here my over my shoulder is a big picture that has been in my life. I'm, I'm 55. This thing's been in my life, you know, all my life, this photo. I've never seen it since, uh, since I was a little kid. And that's my grandfather. His name's Max, and uh, he's been dead for many years, 20 uh, 20 years at least. And this property on which I live, uh, I grew up here. He grew up here. And in that photo there, which is taken on this property, there are some things that he was doing then that he thought was important, but turned out to be very trivial. Uh, and there are a few things that he was doing in his life that turned out to be very vital that are that still matter to this day and that's kind of what i'm thinking about here is what are the things in my life that are trivial that don't deserve my best attention uh what are the things that are uh, vital that deserve most of my attention and that's hard to uh that's hard to figure out but it's very very worthwhile uh, and, you know, there's things like relationships, things like in, around finances, uh, things around perhaps health or uh, thinking. Uh, there are things around uh, creating real solutions for people that have a lasting impact. Uh, those things can be much more vital. Uh, and then there are things that are much more trivial, like uh, perhaps, uh, you know, taking out the garbage, you know, or buying groceries. I mean, those things matter, obviously, uh, to a certain degree, uh, but they are not worth our best efforts. There are lots of things we apply ourselves towards that feel very, very important, uh, but truly uh, they're only urgent. Uh, they're not actually important. And getting good at separating those things is one of the keys to uh, have a, a much more robust life and to have a life in which you impact uh, the people that come after you. Uh, not that come after you as in they're trying to find you, but uh, people that your, your, your uh, progeny, as, as you will. Uh, so this, this idea, this trivial many versus the vital few, uh, has a number of origins. And uh, first of all, uh, a man named uh, Vilfredo Pareto came up with this. He was an, an Italian-born economist. And uh, it's called the 80-20 principle. And he, he really kind of coined, well, I don't know if he coined the phrase 80-20, but he, he kind of laid into theory the idea that there are only a few things, there are small or vital few or uh, just a few things that change everything. And most of the things change nothing. Uh, and he made these observations in his, I think he, I think it was in his garden, that he was uh, looking at his vegetables and fruits and flowers and things and realized that a few of them did most of the work or did got most of the produce. And most of them had a trivial amount of produce. So it was the few versus the many. And then he went on to point out in all sorts of economic ways how this is true as well. Uh, and it's called the Pareto Principle. It's worth looking into. A great book, by the way, uh, by an author named Richard Koch, K-O-C-H, uh, called the 80-20 Rule or the 80-20 Principle, I'm not sure which. And uh, it's it's. I wouldn't listen to it on audio, but I would definitely read it. The audio was... Uh, didn't strike me, but the book really was powerful. Uh, so worth worth reading. But I want to make a couple of points. It's really hard. It's a fight, actually, to shift from the trivial many to the vital few. There's a lot of things that'll fight you. Uh, your 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 emotions are going to fight you. There's these few things that you ought to be really focusing on. Don't feel like 
they're the few things. Uh, they may not, uh, your, your relationships may not uh, go along with the things that are truly important. Uh, your body may fight you. You know, there may be things that um, are super important that you don't, you don't feel like doing physically. Uh, your appetite is going to fight you, right? There's things that feel really important, like, uh, you know, eating things that aren't good for you or doing things that, are, uh, that sound fun or sound, uh, sound good or, uh, versus doing things that don't sound good or aren't fun but are really important, you know. So your appetites are very influential and you've got to learn how to, you got to learn how to get a hold of those. Right, and do something about them. So uh, strategy is a great key word here. Uh, you want to think into the, you want to project or think or, or gaze into the future a little bit. And I'd say 10 years, you know. So, uh, so if you look 10 years into the future and you imagine yourself in that place 10 years from now, uh, what do you think that person that 10 years down the road person is going to uh, believe about today. Uh, when you think back 10 years, there were a lot of things that you were doing that you felt were really important 10 years ago that turned out to be absolute trash, an absolute waste of time. Um, I had a session with a client the other day and we were uh, adding some something to the calendar, uh, and, and the client opened up their calendar, and, and somehow, accidentally, I don't know how this happened, but accidentally opened their digital calendar to ten years previous. It was it was a uh, prescient moment, uh, and 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 they said, "Oh, whoops! I opened my calendar to 2013," and I said, "Stop right there! Just just take your finger off the." phone or computer or whatever it was. And I said, look at me. What do you what do you think was on your calendar in 2013? And if you, and if you if you think about, you know, your calendar this coming week, the things that are you're really busy doing, the the things that are urgently pressing on you, you know, the pressures and the stresses. Um, that was happening in 2013 as well. And I asked my clients, what do you what do you think was pressing so fervently or so so uh so uh, importantly on you uh, and does any of those things do any of those things matter now which of those things do you think first of all can you think of any and they couldn't you're right right i mean who, how can you even begin to remember what you were doing on a given week 10 years ago but in that given week 10 years ago it sure felt important. It sure felt like it was the thing that you really, really needed to be doing. And you were stressed and concerned and, and anxious, right? And there were a lot of things that you were doing. And there are a few things that you should have been doing. And the, and the key to writing a strategy or coming up with a strategy or coming up with a, with a plan, maybe, and those are different things, but to come up with something where you say, wait a second, I really need to be engaged in something else uh, so that 10 years from now, I will say to myself, that was smart. That was, that you know, investing, for instance, can be one of those things, right? There's a farmer saying, uh, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Uh, the second best time is today. And it's a very practical saying as in get off your butt and go plant the tree now you big dummy you know so uh so put yourself 10 years out and say to yourself what will i be wishing then that i was doing now uh, what sort of investments will i be that person then be wishing this person now is doing and that's how you want to write this strategy that's how you want to start to come up with uh the vital few Right, the, the 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 just a few things that you absolutely should focus on. Give it your best energy, give it your best time, give it your best attention, uh, and fight all of the emotions and all of the appetites that are going to press against that. All right, so uh, just wanted to throw a few thoughts at you. Hopefully, 
uh, you'll take this and go do something about it. I would love for you to subscribe to this channel, Broken or Smoking. Uh, ring the bell, you know, uh, share this thing because I want to have an impact on some folks that's lasting. All right, so Mark Whitmore, head coach, Lodestone, True North.